Hello everyone and welcome to the very first ever Thrift Store Electroscore. I'm not sure how many of these I'll be able to do, but we'll see. As you might expect, living in small town Saskatchewan, we don't have too many thrift stores around here. So I might have to depend on going to the city to get stuff to do this series with. But today, I figured we'd start off with this here Sony home theater receiver. This is an STR DB840, which dates from about 2001 or so, so it's plenty old by now and quite obsolete. Now, why would I want to pick up something like this? Well, ever since I was a kid, working in my parents music store I used to find myself downstairs in this in the uh, second hand store quite a bit and I would just come home with whatever I wanted and whatever attracted my attention I am just nuts about this stuff and I guess I haven't let go of that now that I'm older because when I saw this price tag here on top I just could not help myself I just bought this like two days ago and I just haven't been able to control myself. <laughs> I just had to get started on it. Now, the way we're going to do this, I guess, it's not plugged in right now, but we're going to plug it in and we'll see how much of it works as best we can. I've got my RCA tape deck over there as a signal source and I've got five speakers from the Chrysler Infinity collection over here I'll just tell you about these real quick right in back we've got a 6x9 from an old New Yorker we've got three 5x7s that go in the doors of minivans that would be second generation which would be 91 to 95 and we've got this little five and a quarter door speaker, that's from a New Yorker. Now all of these are four ohms. Come on, go down, gimbal. They're all four ohms, but this amp should re really have no trouble with them. It's rated for four to eight ohms. So, this receiver, as it turns out, is a $350 model back in the day. That would be 350 US, which is probably about 425, maybe 450 today, Canadian dollars. So, yeah, I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> you don't find stuff like this at that thrift store every day, so it walked out the door with me. Anyway, let me put you down and we'll start getting into this. Set you up on the table right here. This is a little bit close, but it should do. I'll move it over here. Sorry about the shaking. And now I'm going to go plug her in. We are not connecting the speakers yet because I would like to see how well the amp works first. See if it goes into productive shutdown or anything. And if it doesn't, we're going to test her out with the DMM and see if there are any DC voltages present. Okay, she's plugged in. Now let me see if I can get you a, a view of the front panel here. Which might be easier said than done. Okay. Eh, yeah, I don't know about this. I'm gonna see if I can prop her up a little bit here. This is quite the heavy little unit, I have to say. It's even heavier than my Pioneer 919 in the other room, which is much newer 
and it's a 7.1 channel machine and this one's only 5.1 so all right moment of truth power on and it looks like we've got a display it's not in protective shutdown gave me a little click there I like how the volume has a little lighted indicator there this did not come with a remote so I'm hoping most of the functions can be operated without one of those remote doohickeys okay looks like it switches inputs fine 5.1 channel input is good and that's why I bought it guys this thing not only has a 5.1 channel input it's got a 5.1 output so basically what we're looking at here is uh, maybe 450 or 400 watt amp for 20 bucks I can use that I can really use that if I don't use it for anything else I'll use it for bench testing other gear like this in the future now let's see what else we got going on here got a bunch of other auto format decode two channel stereo ooh here's the fancy surround stuff which is hopelessly obsolete now disco opera house large hall small hall virtual enhanced B A I don't know what the heck that is headphone theater cool stereo movie mono movie night theater this has got a quite a high amount of functions for something from 2001 I gotta say I had back then I had a Kenwood it was a Dolby Pro Logic only and it couldn't do half the things it looks like this one can uh, I don't know what this is I should download the manual and find out okay we got a dimmer over here 0%, 40%, 60%. That's not making a lot of difference. And there's no display off option, which is unfortunate because I like to have my receivers go completely dark. Okay, we got a speaker selector here. Clicky, clicky. okay now what's under the door ooh s video remember those days i've got three super vhs machines back there that say i remember those days composite video memory what does that do fm mode sleep timer test tones that could come in handy equalizer that looks like it just turns it on and off analog input only set up okay that would be for speakers subwoofer yes or no cool it looks like I can do most of the functions on this receiver from the front panel that's good because I don't have a remote and I do not want a remote oh let's see what this gives us oh we have a parametric equalizer not a very useful one 
well, it's actually not bad. I don't see any options to adjust bandwidth, but can't have everything, I guess. I don't see anything for subwoofer, unfortunately. But I guess that'll do for now. Let me go into 5.1. I will move you over, and we're just going to drag this forward so I can do some testing of the speaker outputs. Even with my old Chrysler Infinities, I would rather not blow them up if I don't have to. So, swivel around. Actually, before we do that, let's check out the back panel too, because this is fairly loaded, I'm seeing. There's our 5.1 input, and that is loose. Why is that loose? Um, we've got screws missing. Someone's been into this thing before. Screw missing here, missing here. The two on top are missing. Huh, we might be making a project out of this. Okay, down here we have phono, CD, mini disc or tape. I don't have a mini disc player, so tape deck it is. TV, got S video for all of this. Control S jacks for your Sony Control S functionality, I guess. Let's see what else we got going on here. Here's the pre-out for the, for the machine. I'll switch this one to 4 ohms, even though I don't think I really need to. Usually on a switch like this, between 4 ohms and 8 ohms, this just cuts in a, a current limiter so that uh, the amp doesn't try to overpower itself on 4 ohm speakers. Let's get into the testing here. See if I can clean this off so you can see it. All right. Aim you down just a little more. One of these days I'll get used to this gimbal, I swear. Let's see, can you see better that way? I think so. Okay. We are in DC volts, I do believe. Yes. All right, center channel first. About 12 millivolts. That's good. Rears. Two millivolts, three millivolts. Actually, now I'm kind of a little bit concerned about the center because it's running higher than both of those, but we'll continue on here. Front A, nine millivolts. Seven millivolts. B should not be connected right now. Yeah, about the same. Okay, that's good. Now I'll switch over to AC. These are technically AC outputs, so... But we just want to make sure there's nothing real damaging present here. And I am certainly not seeing anything. Uh, 
Uh, that one's running a little high. But those should be switched out of circuit, so I don't know why they would be. Okay, I think I'm satisfied. Shut that off. And I will shut you guys down for a minute. I will connect the speakers, connect my tape deck here, and then we'll start doing some testing. Okay, folks, I think we're ready to get this party started. I've got the speakers all wired up here. I've got the RCA over there playing a tape already. I've got speaker wires tangled up in my gimbal. And we're just about ready to see what happens here. Now, moment of truth. I hear hissing from speakers. I am on the 5.1 input, which is where I want to be right now. So we'll just take this and plug in each channel and we'll see what works. Very gently, I guess, because somebody did not put the screws back. Nothing from that one. Nothing there. Nor there. Nor there. Nor there. Hmm. Let's check the main inputs and we'll see if those work. Usually when a receiver like this comes to a thrift store, it's not because it's defective, it's because it's obsolete. Usually the defective ones go to recycling, but not this time it would seem. <laughs> Nothing on the tape input. Let's try the CD. Nope, nothing there either. We'll try TV. Nope, nothing there. Nobody home. Let me shut my tape off here, if I can see to do it. Now we'll swivel this around and see if we can get it to do the test tones. Oh, we are getting something. But it's all the way cranked here. So this could be fun diagnosing. But yeah, those do work. Let me try this front input here and then we'll see if we can get any sound at all. Huh. 
Not a thing. Not a thing at all. Nothing on the tuner. I have no idea how to get the tuner to actually do anything, but... but yeah. She's got issues. I'm noticing not all the test tones are very loud either. Let me cancel this. We'll play with this. No, we're going to have to get inside this thing and diagnose. So I guess that'll be it for this video. We'll dig into this in the next video. How's that sound? I'll see you next time. Take care.